Hello, I am Ron Edwards with ChineseEconomicHistory.com and we're here today at Kyoto's uh, World Economic History Congress. This is the first time that the World Economic History Congress is being held in the Far East and we're extremely pleased to have our inaugural interview with Professor Yoshini Bashiba. Uh, Yoshini Bashiba is uh, one of, if arguably not the best, uh, well-known Song China economic historian. Uh, his contributions uh, on this are, are very deep and immense, and his influence has been quite great. He is currently the executive librarian of Toyo uh, Bunko, which I had the pleasure of visiting in November of 19, uh, excuse me, eight, uh, 2013. <laughs> uh, he's also a member of the Japanese Academy, and he is Professor Emeritus of Osaka University. Uh, so first of all, I would just simply like to ask uh, Professor Shiba, how did you become interested in Song China economic history? It was in my uh, time of the high school. World. My teacher was a very famous uh, specialist in medieval economic history list. And he gave me a very interesting lecture on the daily life of the, the changes in daily life of the medieval people. In Chinese the medieval day life? Huh? Uh, I'm sorry, the Chinese med medieval day life? No, uh, German. 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 German history. I see. So, and uh, after I entered in the Tokyo University, I, I, I tried to uh, study the, the, the same topics in China. Medieval China so change. I see. Mm -hmm. um, so many economists in the West do not know that uh, the discovery of the difference of Song China compared to its previous uh, imperial periods was quite different and that that was a Japanese discovery. Uh, could you please briefly explain the Japanese discovery of the Tang Song transition, uh, which Western economists would call Song China economic growth, and its impact? Mm. The, it was in, uh, in early 20th centuries, that uh, two professors of the Kyoto University, one, uh, Naito Turajiro, and... Uh, and al also known as Naito Konan. Naito Konan, and later, and, and uh, Miyazaki Ichisada proposed an idea of the, uh, t uh, the big, big uh, social and economic change took place in the Sun during the late uh, uh, half of the Tang Dynasty and uh, Tang and, and the Song, Song, Song period. That is an, uh, that, uh, that change had, uh, but, but, uh, they insist that the two aspects, one is an economic growth that, that supported the political change and, and, uh, and the other one is an emergence of the uh, more rational and uh, more, more restructured form of the civil, bureaucracy, civil bureaucracy that is known by the enforcement of the examination system and all the, that, that uh, helps the emergence of high mobility and the promotion system and the audit system. So, and of, of course, and this new type of the bureaucracy uh, strengthen the central uh, centralized power of the emperor, and so so such a new new type of the civil bureaucracy continued down to the end of the Qin Dynasty, and uh, when the Naito was an, uh, uh, writing this, this, these topics as to Kyoto University, he uh, also experienced a very, very great change in China, the collapse of the Qin Dynasty, Qin and then the emergence of the uh, Republican uh, policy. So, so the, the, the notion of the 
Tan Son tradition contains two strands, two aspects. One is the emergence of the civil, new type of civil bureaucracy. Bureaucracy just continued up to the end of the Qin Dynasty. And the another one is that uh, unprecedented uh, growth in economy, commerce, urbanization, and uh, productivity, and uh, of course the uh, increase in the population. That's, that's a Japanese idea of uh, Tanson transition. This, this idea was uh, introduced by perhaps in 1960s by uh, Edwin Rashawa uh, of Harvard University. Edward Rashawa. Uh, yeah, and then, uh, then uh, the Westerners uh, became much familiar with uh, this kind of ideas. I see. So the. Uh, <coughs> Conan and Miyazaki, this is sometimes called the Conan Miyazaki mm. this school or tradition. Yeah, the same tradition, yes. Yes, uh, they in initially discovered that this uh, medieval China was not the same uh, as its previous period, and its two main uh, strands of influence were that the civil bureaucracy was mm. uh, changed mm. uh, uh, to as, as I understand it, the, the aristocratic uh, grip mm. on the yes. government was broke and, right. yes. and positions in the civil bureaucracy became based on mm. the civil examination. Mm. That's right. Yeah. And also uh, that there was economic growth, mm. per capita mm. uh, income increases and population income mm. increases. Mm. Yes. Um, how has the mainstream view of Song China changed in Japan among non-Marxists as a result of this Kyoto School mm. uh, debate, this, mm. this uh, emergence of these new ideas in Kyoto? Yeah, yeah. Mm. The, I think then it was in, uh, around the middle of the 18, 1918 and, and 1890s there's a kind of uh, compromise reached that between the Marxist group and the Kyoto group, non-Marxist no Kyoto group. In the 1980s and 1990s? Na, yes, yeah. and, uh, yes, led by the Utsunomiya Kiyoshi. And several books are published about that. And then uh, the, uh, the, the uh, point of compromise is that uh, the non-Marxist historians uh, uh, continue to use the term of Marxism. Modern, uh, early modern. Yes. Yeah, time, uh, early modern periodization. And uh, the Marxist side, for the Marxist side, they uh, uh, are refrained from uh, using the uh, Mechanical use of the strict Marxist Mar 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 Marxian hypothesis of yes. stage by stage evolution. I see. And that and, uh, is a uh, major point of the controversy before the 1980, right? I see. Yeah. So, um, the uh, the two the two extreme factions were the uh, strong supporters of the Kyoto School mm -hmm. and uh, Marxists in in Japan and you say this um, compromise came mm -hmm. about was this compromise uh, uh, driven mainly by Marxists at, at the at the University of Kyoto? Yeah, that was a discuss yeah, discussion among the. Marxist, uh, pro-Marxist scholars in the Kyoto University. I see. Most, yes. And so the, the, the compromise came from the <laughs> Marxists at Kyoto University. That's right, yeah. I see. Yeah. And uh, the upshot was that the strict interpretation mm. of the Marxian uh, stage theory uh, mm. was not to be so strictly applied yeah. to China's case. That's right. To be, yeah, be yeah, a yes. bit more practical. Yeah, that's Is that right? right? Yeah, yeah. That's very interesting. Mm. Okay. Uh, Finally, uh, uh, a, a simple question that uh, economists in the West would be are, are quite interested in mm. is based on all the quantitative 
and qualitative evidence. Mm. Do you believe that there was economic growth in Song China where both incomes mm. and populations mm -hmm. saw unprecedented mm -hmm. and considerable increases? Yeah. 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 Uh, I think uh, the, 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 the uh, economic growth of Song measured by population growth or the, uh, some kind of um, agrarian revolution, uh, improvement in techniques. Yes. And uh, coming and, and the uh, influence of the commerce and uh, urbanization, uh, or uh, major understanding of the uh, economic historians in Japan. Uh, in Japan, this, uh, is, this is the, uh, yeah, yeah. the general view, yeah. at least among non-Marxists. Non yeah, but the problem is that the uh, trend towards the uh, uh, parochial uh, increasing concern about the uh, parochial uh, themes um, uh, in the uh, Chinese history. The, the, uh, the, it is uh, occurred uh, at the time uh, after the, the compromise was <laughs> uh, reached that um, because uh, people, the readers of uh, mid-range uh, how to say, uh, middling theories, or so, the theoretical interpreters uh, emerged after that. The, uh, instead, uh, the, the specialists who equipped with a broader and extensive view uh, had to be, uh, became, uh, had to emerge. I see. Yeah. So, some of this is uh, is a bit like uh, Germany or some other other European uh, mm -hmm. countries, at least in the, in the recent past, where uh, uh, this pro, uh, parochial system emerged, where there's a, a single professor on, and many professors below him who <laughs> their research was tied to this, and, yes. and so this happened in Japan. Yeah. This is happening yeah. after after this compromise. After the compromise. I see. Yeah. And so people with a broader point of view had a more difficult time in, in, ex in having their views ex that's expressed. Right. Yeah, that's right. I see. Um, so uh, next, what are the, uh, what in general today, uh, not in the 18, 1980s or the 1990s, but today, mm. what are the views among Song China experts in Japan mm regarding the economic performance of Song China. Uh, today's uh, experts in Song China. Mainland China? China? No. 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 Japan. In Japan. Japan. What are the Japanese Song China experts today? Yeah. Uh, do they generally view that Song China is having experienced economic growth? Yeah, that is an, a growing number of the scholars of uh, Chinese history. I see. Who, uh, uh, admitting the Tanson tradition as a big watershed yes. uh, uh, in the China, China's economic growth. So, I see. Yeah. So this big watershed was quite a, uh, a break, yeah, from, a break. The, from the from the past mm. where break, yes. population and incomes perhaps were mm. roughly constant or growing very slowly, but in the mm. Song China, yeah. uh, these or at least from the the as you say, the Tang Song transition. So since after the rebellion, mm -hmm. up, up, including the, the, the Song uh, accelerating and yeah, yes, in the Song, uh, this was a, a major break mm. in Chinese long-run economic performance. That's right. I see. Uh, I'd like to shift gears now and, and talk about one of the, the most influential books in this field, uh, a book that Professor Yoshini Bashiba wrote in 1968. It was written and published in Japanese. Uh, it was partially translated by Mark Elvin uh, in English uh, under the title of Commerce and Society in Song China. Uh, can you please tell me how your book in 1968 uh, was initially received in Japan and elsewhere? Mm -hmm. yeah. well, when I published the book in 1968, uh, the time was in the heyday of the Marxian debate over the 
development stage, stage by stage development of the universal economy. So, the, and, and Marxists were preoccupied by the uh, by the to appreciate them, didn't appreciate them, the uh, growth or emergence of the name. Uh, uh, commercial. It, it, as I understand it, the Marxists pretty much generally reject the notion mm. of the role of uh, markets or commerce in social change. That's right. Yeah. So they simply won't, will not discuss it or just reject not, it not, without yeah. any discussion. Yeah, that's right. I see. <laughs> but um, it, it was not, uh, after the 1980s that uh, people gradually appreciate uh, the role of commerce. The role of commerce, yes. I see. Mm -hmm. And is uh, uh, the Marxist tradition today, with the young, with new and young scholars, and current, mm -hmm. currently, at least this, at least the rigid version, mm -hmm. uh, is that still prominent or notable, or is is that largely disappeared in Japan? Notable, or the prominent. very rigid Marxist mm -hmm. view. Mm -hmm. Uh, does that still exist today in Japan? Yeah, yeah some. Um, some. Some still, yeah. Some still have, yeah. have this view. It's, it's still sticking on the, the periodization. But the, ma but the majority of, uh, of Japanese scholars uh, are non-Marxist. Non-Marxist. And yeah. view Song China as a period of economic growth. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> lastly, what are you and other Song Dynasty uh, experts mm. researching today. What oh. topics are are popular and interesting today for the oh, yes. uh, current research and yeah. young scholars today in Japan? Yeah. After the introduction of the French annals or the social history inquiry by Brodel and others uh, in the 1970s, so, uh, the Japanese uh, pay much attention tend to pay much attention to the social social history, the reproduction of social history. For example, the, uh, the most favorite topic among the younger Japanese generation was the legal uh, procedure. Legal uh, procedures. At the lowest level of the society. I see. Yeah. So local legal. Uh, local legal. Legal, yeah. legal yeah. issues. Yeah. It, it reveals the uh, interaction between the written law and an uh, unwritten law, uh, customs or the norms of the people. That, yeah. That's a very interesting and difficult field to, yeah, to, that's to, right. to yeah. come up, make the link or mm. the distinction between formal and formal rules. Yeah, but, but fortunately, uh, the uh, evidence is a rather richly preserved. I see. Study. I have a colleague of mine who's at the Academia Seneca in the uh, History and Philology Institute, uh, Leo Lien, uh -huh. who, who yeah. does, uh, who's it's from excellent. Princeton yeah. University, yeah. and he is uh, expert on Song Dynasty legal That's, tradition. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Is he part of the? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. considered part sure. of this. I, I pay respect to him. He uh, he's very interested in uh, women's rights mm -hmm. during the Song yeah, Dynasty. Yes, yes. Can you tell us just a little bit about what different? rights women had during the Song Dynasty yeah. that they did not have before? It, in, it was uh, in the legal documents of the Southern Song. There, uh, there is some evidence of the women had an uh, 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 right to inherit property from their parents. But I, uh, it is a, uh, it that uh, this this uh, custom or, uh, didn't develop into the main uh, chain. So, I see. So it may be that uh, this uh, special case related to the uh, reclamation of Jiangxi uh, or the middle part of the China and uh, belongs to uh, a rather special case. As, as I understand it, uh, from my uh, discussions with Leo Li Yen, uh, it's only based on, a, on about a handful of cases from the late Northern Song and early, mm -hmm. early Song. Mm -hmm. uh, yet, many scholars view this as the imperial government 
uh, reacting mm. to local customs mm -hmm. that had right. actually yeah. began at the, in a yeah. wider level at the lower at the lower levels of society and yes, the lower right. levels yeah. of government, yeah. and eventually was uh, adopted by the central government, mm. uh, and uh, also that uh, the right of inheritance. There seems to be some debate, although it. From my understanding and discussions with uh, the old Ian is is that uh, the debates are about the the name. Mm. Is it an inheritance, or is it uh, part of a, a money mm. distribution? But uh, independent of that, mm. women gained wealth from mm. their parents mm. when their when their parents died, mm. and this was something very unique to the Song Dynasty. Mm. It didn't exist before, and it didn't persist into the Ming Qing period. Is that correct? Uh, and, uh, there is another example that the women's uh, right uh, for the dowry. For the dowry, uh, uh, yes. Much larger in, uh, in the song. Yes. And uh, the compared with the Ming mm -hmm. Qing. I don't know the exact reason for that, uh, but uh, anyway, the women's rights uh, that were the characters in the song was uh, reduced uh, in the, during the Mina Qin. I see. Yeah. So it seems that women had more, in some sense, more economic rights in the, in the song I, dynasty. I guess so, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I probably so. I think uh, the, the evidence is, is, is thousand year olds and shaky, but it, uh, it, it seems to suggest that, and that's very interesting. Mm, very that, interesting that, topic, that, yeah. During economic change, mm. that women would have more rights uh, econo and yeah, economically yeah. during yeah. that period. Yeah. Well, um, I don't want to take any more of your time, mm -hmm. uh, and I wish to thank you very much no, 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 for that. having us yeah. uh, interview you. Again, this is uh, uh, Chinese uh, economichistory.com's inaugural interview with uh, Professor uh, Yoshini Bashiba. He's uh, one of the world's experts on Chinese economic history and Song China in general. Yeah. And we thank him very much for his time Wonderful. and hope yeah. you enjoy yeah. your, your time yeah. at the uh, uh, World Economic History Congress here at Kyoto. And I might add, yeah. it's quite ironic that the Kyoto School <laughs> won the debate. And now, <laughs> the first time the World Economic History Congress, we come That's to right. Kyoto. That's right. Yeah. So thank you very thank you much. Very much. I, I enjoyed it. Thank you.